And welcome back to another draft with me, Marshall. How are you? <clears throat> are you hoping that I open something awesome? Because I'm hoping that I open something awesome. And I opened up Evolving Door. <laughs> I did also open up Lagrella, which I will be taking here. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> Evolving Door. Th this is the type of card that I generally don't recommend playing in limited at all. But this is actually a particularly bad version of it too, so it's it's really off the table. But Lagrella is one of the better uncommon, so we'll take it here. Ooh, Jewel Thief, Metropolis Angel, Elegant Entourage, Bouncer's Beatdown, Witness Protect. Wow, there's lots of good stuff here. Funny enough, even with three on family uncommons, I think I'm just going to take Jewel Thief. <laughs> uh, it kind of says a lot about that card, doesn't it? But Bouncer's Beatdown is like a, a competent removal spell. Elegant Entourage is like a competent four drop. It's fine. And Metrop Metropolis Angel is the same. They're fine. This card can do stuff, but yeah, Jewel Thief's just a uh, step above. All right, Adjudicators, Ceremonial Groundbreaker, which I think is okay. I'll just take the Adjudicators over Prize Fight and Groundbreaker here. Make Disappear for the two drop slot. That seems pretty good. I run out of town, I play sort of reluctantly, but I do play it. Not a fan of Most Wanted, although I think the artwork's really cool. <clears throat> um, and I don't like Psionic Snoop at all, so I'll take Make Disappear. <clears throat> so I wanted a two drop, and I got Civic Gardener, Attended Socialite, Backup Agent, and Backstreet Bruiser. So this is a good time to figure out which one I like the best, and, and that's Backup Agent here. Um, I think the next best is Civic Gardener, then Bruiser, then Socialite. But just as a put it on the battlefield kind of Game in and game out card. I think the backup agent is the best of this particular bunch. Okay. Here I'll take the gardener, of course, over the socialite, but also over the dapper shield mate, <clears throat> which I'm not a huge fan of. All right. Another backup agent. Yeah. You don't have to convince me. This has actually been really good. I think our last five picks have all been twos and then we could take botanical plaza or, or broker's hideout but i'll just take the hideout here i find that in the broker's deck i'm more likely to just want to have my mana down to cast these type of cards than i am to need a card in the late game brokers usually does a pretty good job um of ending the game before you get to that point so i'll take run out of town here okay I guess I'll take Buyer Silence because I think it's the most likely to make the cut, even though I'd rather not play it. Let's take a, a rare for gem value. Remember to take rares if all else being equal, if you're not going to play any of the cards and there's no other impact. Because once you fill up all of your rare slots, the additional copies of any rares that you get end up becoming gems and those actually do add up it's not a huge amount of gems but like when you draft a bunch it those become free drafts at some point Ooh, nice reservoir kraken that's a pretty good card you know i i, I don't have this card in the bomb category right like i, I I don't have it in the thing where like you play Reservoir Kraken and then you just can't lose, but I have it in the one category below that, you know, where it's very, very powerful. It has a big impact on the game, especially if you play it on turn four, it's a problem. And uh, there's no easy solution to it. The ward two means that some of the removal spells that could hit it don't. And so you get to do the Kraken thing for a little while. That's a big game. And then as the game progresses, yes, they can one for one with it, but I mean, that's their best case scenario. Man, there's an obscure interceptor, but our man is already a little sketchy just for brokers, so I don't think I can splash over for it. So I want to take Civil Servant here, think over Backup Agent. Yeah, I will do so. Pretty bad pack here. The Backstreet Bruiser isn't really necessary 
<clears throat> excuse me at this point because we have so many twos prize fight probably within reason to consider playing a prize fight here what i really want is just a uh, kind of creatures like what did this get in here uh you know more three four five drop creatures that type of thing there just haven't really been that many here's one though this card's extremely good if you have a lot of backup agents and we already have two of those there's an off chance that we wheel the one from the from pack two pick one as well so that's pretty good yeah like if this was another adjudicators i would just windmill it as it stands suppose i'm going to take a little chat here not really a big fan of security bypass a lot of people play it i have lost to it on occasion because it does kind of put a pretty poignant question to you but if you can answer that question it, it's a disaster like the cards it carries with it a very very low downside and uh, that is difficult for people to recognize you know a lot of times when you play a card when it goes well your brain will be like this is sweet and when your opponent kills your creature in response or bounces it or whatever you just go like okay well what's next and you don't really recognize that and then you end up losing that game <laughs> and then somehow by the end of the game you've forgotten that you got two for one or tempo blown out or whatever uh from that card and even though that was if that had been a a card that didn't open you up to that type of downside risk you may have actually won that's just a very difficult thing to kind of tease out um case the joint i really don't want to play it this i guess i could play speakeasy server people play this card right I find it fairly mediocre, but what am I, I mean, I only have a couple of fives. I may not even play by your silence. Yeah, just these picks have been a little bit flat. Like I'd much rather have the four and five drop powerful stuff or mana fixing than, you know, another civic gardener or whatever. That said, the deck's coming together and we still have a whole nother pack and half of this pack. Okay, and this is fairly typical for the format we are playing the most popular color trio so if a pack's a little light on it, it it tends to be gone and as you can see there's just nothing for us here i'll just grab a random uncommon okay gathering throng or ceremonial groundbreaker you know we actually are fairly up on citizenry here so i think i can actually take the groundbreaker all right, we did not get back the other backup agent, but that was not necessarily likely. I'll take Majestic Metamorphosis here. And then there's a bunch of nothing to end the pack because we're not the only one in this color. So they, even picking up a speakeasy server there is probably pretty big. But again, we, we're doing fine on playables and we have a whole nother pack to go. So let's, let's get some, uh, some great stuff here. Mm. well so there's ballroom brawlers which is okay sky crier which is a two drop i want to play there's a gathering throng but i think that ship sailed and then there's skybridge towers which is probably the uh the vegetables that i just need to eat at this point yeah i'm gonna have to take skybridge towers so i've only got brokers hideout and spars adjudicators and my mana's like very spread out, so I have to take towers here. Okay, another jewel thief. There's also another bouncer's beatdown, hold for ransom, and of course there's like now all the gathering throngs in the world, but yeah, go for jewel thief here. Jewel thief also, of course, is mana fixing, so that matters as well, and jewel thief. Triple jewel thief, that is, that is insane. Yes, that, that helps out a lot. That makes casting turn four reservoir kraken very very likely because well, not we don't even necessarily need to hit the uh, the land drop for that turn and getting double blue can be a little tricky. It's weird in these decks, but sometimes it's harder to cast you know a card that has double blue than that, that has um, you know even triple colors. It's a little bit weird. Hmm, Jenny Fay, I can actually play that card. Do I have things that care? Hmm. 
It does count that, right? Yeah, it, it actually is. It, Jewel Thief makes creatures with that, so that's a thing. This does too. Hmm. Otherwise, I'm taking Spar's Adjudicators or Voice of the Vermin. No, let's go for Ginny Fey. It's also just a 3-3 three, three for 3. Like, I've got a lot of those, and those do add up. Okay, I guess I'll take Disdainful Stroke. I'm actually somewhat likely to run that. Oh, man. A little bit unlucky here. All three of these lands, none of them touch my colors. Um, that said, I did get a backup agent, and I was kind of in the market for another one. Okay, and here's the Skycrier. I actually am pretty happy to pick up the Skycrier uh, at this point. Because it, um, it it picks up the Ceremonial Groundbreaker really, really well because it's a citizen, so it's only one to equip. And, you know, it gives the plus two, plus one and trample that you, that you add. It gives that power and tough, that power. Oh, nice. We wield this other one, too. All right. Well, this will bump out a couple of the junkers. It's also really good with backup agent. Like you can go Sky Cryer turn two, turn three backup agent. Because once you get Sky Cryer up to two power, it's really good. But at any rate, one way to think about equipment, pump spells and stuff like that, it, plus one, plus one counters are also like this, is the idea that if you can imbue extra stats onto the plus one, plus one counters or the power and toughness bumps or whatever that you're getting then that makes them that much more high leverage, right? So for example, if I have a 3-3 on the ground and I put Groundbreaker on it, it becomes a 5-4. That's, that's pretty good. Like that, that's a real thing that matters and, you know, you can live with that benefit. But, uh, I'll take this, I guess. But if you can put it on a creature that has flying, then the plus one, plus one counter also gets flying, right? That's a way that you can look at it. And if it gets lifelink, then that gets lifelink too. So now you're not just putting plus power, you're putting more lifelink, more trample, you know, if it has trample, this, this gives a trample, but, <clears throat> um, more power in the air, right? Where that's a way to leverage those type of things to a, to a more benefit to you. It's obvious, right? Like, obviously it's better to put it on a creature with flying or not, but when you look at the smaller level synergies like Skycrier, that's where it really stands out, where you're going, okay, I can make this thing into a 3-2 flying lifelink trample, and I have to pay one mana, where if I throw that on a backup agent, it's like, okay, I can make it into a 4-3 four, four, or whatever. It's like, fine. But one of them's like, whoa, right? Like, that's a card that's hard to beat. And one of them's like, meh, whatever. Okay, so this throng needs to go. I think I'm very creature heavy. No, actually, not too bad, 17. All right, so I need to make three cuts from here. Let's see. A little chat can probably go. And I think I'm going to, I could just cut these two counters. They're a little awkward in the deck mana wise, because this way, all of my two drop creatures are either green or white. And that means I could probably like get away with doing this. to try to shore up my mana a little bit. Because after I get Jewel Thief down, then it's fine. I'll be able to cast, you know, any number of these gold cards or the Kraken or whatever. But until then, I may not be able to. I still have Buy Your Silence in here, which I'd prefer not to, but I think I'll actually keep. All right, let's try this step. I also want to remind you this video is uh, brought to you by the kind supporters of the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash limited resources. Thanks everybody for supporting me over there. There's a link in the uh, description if you're interested. All right. 
Having no green mana here is a problem, but we've got Spar's Adjudicators and Backup Agent on turn two here, so I think it'll be okay. Opponent has a Newser. All right. I'm just going to... Wow, another island, really? Uh, I'm just going to play the uh, Backup Agent then. <clears throat> I need to buy myself a little bit of time. Okay, now I expect a no attack here from the new Z because it can get flying. A green source here would be nice. No, a Kraken? Okay, that's actually not the worst either. So I'm going to go Adjudicators here and then probably just play the Kraken. I'm going to take a thumping in the meantime. Jeez, <clears throat> it's a good curve out. Looks like they're short of white mana here, so they got rid of the inspiring overseer that they plan to play in a little bit. Let's just get the Kraken down. <clears throat> and then I'll pass the turn back. Shakedown heavy. And then their attack actually doesn't look great here. Like, if they tap down the Kraken, I can just block with the fish on the agent to knock off the thing, and I could trade off the agent for whichever thing doesn't get flying if they send in. So it's like fine, but not amazing. Wow, that was a good one. That was a nice one. Um, wonder if I just want to go Jewel Thief into Lagrella here. I can Lagrella the Shakedown Heavy. I also could prize fight to lose or the Wing Shield Agent here, in addition to Lagrella or Jewel Thief. All right, I think I'm going to go with Lagrella. And I kind of want to hit to lose, but I just don't want to give them the Inspiring Overseer, even if they can't cast it right now. Also could take out the Wing Shield Agent and just try to deal with the Shakedown Heavy the good old-fashioned way. I'll just kill this, and I think I'll just do only that. And then I'll use prize fight to take down the agent. Okay, so they did actually tap down this thing. If that's the case, I should probably just do this now. So now they just have to deal with kind of an annoying board state here. <clears throat> and even if they can get in for some damage, I can speak easy server to kind of stem the bleeding. Got a lot of creatures now. They're going to dig up some bodies. Okay. Midnight assassin. And then I assume they're just going to go for the wing shield agent again. But it looks a lot worse after I get the speakeasy server on the battlefield, so that's good. And they don't really have any attacks here. Ooh, very nice. I 
All right, I'm just going to place bar as adjudicators. No, I'm just going to send in. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen here? They've got wing shield agent, midnight assassin in hand. Yeah, they're just going to trade off. That makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> I like it. So they probably just double spell here. They still don't have white mana, so the Toulouse dying really isn't that big of a deal. Hmm. I would like to get in with Spar's Adjudicators here. That's kind of a thing. So I think I'm going to do this. Let's see what they do about the Kraken. They probably need to tap it. Yeah, they did. So I'll attack with these, and they have kind of an obvious block here. And then they get back that, but they don't have the white mana for it, so it's like probably not that big of a deal. And then I can play Jewel Thief. And now we've kind of got an overwhelming board state. We're at 12. Oh, they just snapped off of planes. Must be nice. And an unlicensed hearse, but it's way too late for that to be a big deal. Okay, well, I don't really want to show them this, but I do want the life. Because I'm going to do a pretty sizable attack here. See, so that has to block there. These fishes are getting in for sure. That's an easy attack. That's an easy attack. And do I attack with Lagrella? Could, could they really afford to double block Lagrella? Block here, they take four. Double block there, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Eh, I don't think they can. Okay, but that's lethal. Unless I miscounted. Looks like I didn't miscount. <clears throat> All right. Counting. It's what's for dinner. Yep. And that looks like an easy keep. I love being on the play with this hand too. Because we get to just like pretty sick curve out. Go with the crier. Jet mirrors fixer. Not oh my god. Is this really happening? We're going to go triple Jewel Thief. Hmm. Am I supposed to play this here? I feel like the answer is no. I'll just trade off here. I don't care. Jewel Thief for Pyre Sledge Arsonist, that seems fine. Especially with Skycrier, because it's it's a bit vulnerable to it. Ooh, they're gonna take it. I like this. They must have some plans. They've got plans. OK, 
Okay, only one green source, so they can only pump the fixer once. Wow. Okay, but then they can arsonist to kill the scryer. Okay, so I was thinking, wow, they're just going to two for one themselves, but they're two for doing themselves, so it's actually not that bad. But it's also not that good. Like, we're still pretty significantly ahead. It's hmm. interesting. All right. Uh, my turn. Yes, please. Jam here. But wait, there's more. And I am actually going to dip into the treasury here to get Civic Gardener down. Because... We're still one mana away from casting these. Ooh, you got your own jewel thief. I see, I see. Backup agent. Hmm. I feel like I just want to play Celestial Regulator here. Tap down the jewel thief. Attack with everything. But I could play backup agent first. Still get in a pretty good attack. And then the regulator actually taps something down for like a full turn cycle. Yeah, I'll just go with the regulator. Because I also can just play backup agent next turn and put the counter on the regulator. And now it's 3-4 flyer, which is kind of a big problem. So let's get busy here. Is untapping anything, any land good? Yes, it is. So when I said next turn, I meant this turn. I also could just spend this turn on the adjudicators, but it's gotta be better just to play the agent. All right, so which one of these is more important? It's still the Pyre Sledge Arsonist, just because it's a two-two. Like the Cavaretti Initiate is just never getting activated here. So yeah, let's play this. So the question is, should I put this counter on the Jewel Thief, the Gardener, or the Regulator? I don't think putting it on itself is the option. So I'm going to put it on the Regulator here. <clears throat> oh, they got a Fight Spell. Huh. I guess I walked in. Oh, it's not Torch. It's Torch Breath. Okay. Very nice. Because it's a blue permanent. It? Very good. I could definitely come back to haunt us here. Um, sure. Yeah. Punished. Rewarded? Punished? I don't know. It kind of depends on how you view it, I guess. So this thing can get double strike. But I can still end up just trading off for Jewel Thief. <clears throat> I'd like to get that jewel thief off the battlefield. Another fixer, all right. <laughs> Amazingly, I'm still on three lands here somehow, but... <clears throat> Hmm. I'll pass here. I have no problem just throwing the super block in here. They just stone cold top decked a card like it's unlikely to be a combat trick, and I'll trade off the two creatures for these two. Oh, I top decked another Wrecking Crew. That's pretty good. Somehow, I still have not hit land drop number four. Like, what is happening here? Hmm. 
such a good start to this game, but the lack of mana here has definitely hurt. Now they have Riveteer's Charm with no black mana. Wow. Bizarre. It's going to be really tough to win from this point, even though we're not like so far behind. It's just like we've just lost a lot of tempo here, I think. This thing doesn't have trample, right? Six ten, that would be twelve damage. Yeah, let's jump. Somehow the one land that means that I can't cast anything. Okay, well, this means we get to survive. Because this is four, five, six, seven. Which is not nine. Yeah, that looks like game to me. Guess we play play my card, I guess, but this means that we can't ever cast the Kraken. For example, wow, for such an amazing start against green red, I did not anticipate that we would just flat out run out of gas, <laughs> but we did. Okay. This is a good one. This is actually really good. It'd be super good on the play, but we, we do have the chance to do Ginny Fay into Jewel Thief. So that's pretty sweet. Civic Gardener over Skycrier. Um, hmm. Actually, yeah, I think I will do that. Now let's leave the gardener back to block the roast master here. <clears throat> this still isn't a great attack. It's a good amount of damage, but it's like their whole turn. They're not developing their board. <clears throat> We're going to have a heck of a board here. All right. So I go jewel thief. And I guess I just want three ones. Tap this. And then the question is, do I want to play Skycrier? And I think the answer is yes. Like the chances that I just straight up die from this point are quite low. And if that's the case, like backup agent, put a counter on Sky Cryer is like a pretty big deal. And then I can prize fight down the Jet Mirrors Fixer or something. Like my opponent took a pretty heavy tempo negative turn to get in for six. <clears throat> but we kind of got that back. Do I want to bother killing anything here? 
Does this make a treasure? It does. So I actually get to make a another creature off of this. That does seem actually quite good. So let's let's just go pedal to metal here. So I guess what I do is I go here and here. Maybe I sh even should just make a haster there, but whatever. Uh, because I'm not going to attack with Ginny Faye anyway. <clears throat> don't have anything to spend the mana on. Guess I just untap this. Don't care about that. Hmm. It's kind of interesting, I guess. But I think I'm just going to turn everything sideways. Oh, no, maybe I won't. Oh, but they had to sacrifice one of the gold hounds to do that. Okay. Um, so they can block here. Yeah, whatever. You guys figure it out. Um, Take seven, take six. I guess I'll play this too, because I could just activate the Sky Crier on end step. It won't help my opponent hit their land drop, and it could get me something that could finish the game in case they play something that matters. When you activate Sky Crier, matters a lot, right? If you activate it on your opponent's end step, you lock them out of... Think about the card types that you lock them out of playing for that turn cycle, right? You lock them out of lands, creatures, sorceries, artifacts, enchantments, right? The only thing they can play are things with flash or instance or whatever. Like it's pretty narrow, the band of cards that they can actually leverage. Now, if you don't win the game that turn and you pass the turn back, now they can take advantage. So, and that's fine though. I mean, remember you get a card and they get a card. So you're down the tempo, but the way you can gain that back is by doing it on their end step where you might be able to leverage a card to win the game that turn. If you have to pass the turn back, then your card neutral, but you're four mana down and that's bad for you generally. So you have to have a good reason to do it. This is actually a mulligan, I think. Weirdly enough, so Sky Cryer on its own is not very good. Price fight's terrible with Skycryer, and a double blue spell with no fixing at all is like uncastable. So I'm going to ship that. Wow, this is really bad too. I will be keeping it, but I'll just get rid of Buy Your Silence, I guess. Maybe Ceremonial Groundbreaker. I don't know. Groundbreaker's probably worth keeping around so many of my creatures that I could draw over the next few turns can get upgraded from that. I can't actually cast Ginny Faye either with this particular opener, but it wouldn't take much for me be, to be able to do so. Just a, a green source. So this is a sketchy hand. And we'll have to see how it goes. I did pick up a regulator here, so that's something that I can at least cast. Civil Servant. I wish I had one of those myself. Uh, yeah, I'll just play the Regulator. That blocks a Civil Servant, at least as it sits. If they play a Citizen here, then that's no longer the case. I think I just block here. I don't mind trading my turn and the Regulator for a combat trick if that's what they're going for. And if they're not, then calling the bluff's a big game. Yeah, sweet. Called the bluff. All right, Civic Gardener, huh? Um. I'll cast Civic Gardener. 
I'm not going to attack here. I uh, I need to buy myself some time here to kind of recover. Like, I don't have a clear game plan on how to win this game. But it doesn't feel like me trading a bunch of damage off. Would uh, be great. Okay. Gilded pinions. Okay, Lagrella is a nice draw. I don't really see anything that I need to Lagrella here, so I'm going to go for Groundbreaker, throw it on the Gardener, and start slamming. And tap the Regulator, I guess. Like the Gardeners, it's interesting to figure out what to untap there because the Gardener is the card that I'm actually more interested in blocking with, but it is possible that the Gardener doesn't survive combat where the Regulator is more likely to. So that's why I chose it. These are smaller decisions. Like these aren't the kind of like game breaker style decisions, but you know how it is. They all add up. They all matter. And this is a citizen. So now I have to take my medicine where if I would have done the gardener, I wouldn't. That's something to consider. Um, I wonder if I can just keep slamming here. A little bit unfortunate about not being able to get Ginny Faye down before the Jewel Thief. Uh, it looks like the Jewel Thief is what gonna it's what is what is gonna allow me to actually get Ginny Faye on the battlefield. Um, but that means I don't get the the token benefit out of it, and I can't float mana or do anything like that. So that's kind of disappointing. But I could get them both down this turn, which is powerful. No, I could not get them both down this turn. All right, cancel that order. I forgot, I can't attack with the Gardener. But I can still cast Jewel Thief, which is what I want to do anyway, and pass turn back. I've got the Gardener to block the Adjudicators. I've got the Jewel Thief to, ooh. You've got one of your own, do you? What do you put that on? These are both citizens, so that's one mana. You could just burn all three to put it on there. I have to be wary of the uh, gilded pinions as well. Good game so far. The run out of town can also interact with the ceremonial groundbreaker or gilded pinions to kind of change combat, shall we say? Okay. And then are you going to actually tap the adjudicators here too, or not so much? Does make it very difficult to race if they tap it, but they want to keep it back for the jewel thief, which makes sense. So I'll just make the easy trade. I mean, remember, that was civil servant for civic gardener. Like, that is a trade I like. Okay, now they're kind of out of resources here. The real question here, so I want to get rid of Spar's Adjudicators. The question is, do I want to get rid of Celestial Regulator while I'm at it? I 
think the answer is yes. Like my opponent hasn't shown us any removal yet, but like how is Lagrella just sticking on the battlefield for the rest of this game, right? Like how is this game ending with Lagrella just still sitting there, not having left? Doesn't feel that likely. Ooh, wow, the big hitters are here. Work, chop, or chief. Dang. Are you a citizen? No, you're a rhino warrior. Hmm. I'm just not going to block that. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna make a dragon. I'll trade for the war chief. Oh wow. How did that happen? Okay. Maybe they're just going for the pinions on the war chief plan. Is that the idea? Ugh. Jealous. So jealous. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll just take my medicine here. Because I have the run out of town for the token anyway. And they may even dump a bunch of mana into it. Go ahead. I'm going to have to take some medicine here, but then I get to untap and hopefully run out of town proves powerful. Hmm, no going for the groundbreaker. Wow. Wow. That's some powerful stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I can get out of this. <clears throat> like these are some hammer follow up plays to try to keep up with. I mean, I can sort of almost stabilize here, but like, ugh, this is going to be really tough. This is one of those games where like it was pretty even and then this thing hit and then this thing was the follow up. Like that's just a lot of action coming from the other side here. Okay. 
Jeez. That should be game. Yeah, it's just too much. Just too much power. Just, you know, like I wouldn't be surprised if we went back and counted up like how much mana was spent this game that it would be like significantly in my opponent's favor. That's kind of a, it's, that, that, is, that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily tell you who wants the, who wins the game, but like, it's a, there's a good indicator there. The person who spends the most mana wins the game. And sometimes like this wasn't about efficiency, right? This is just more about like draw. Right. Just like, hey, I, I went five drop, five drop, four drop, five drop. Right. And I spent like three or four mana in that time or something like that. You're not you're not going to win that very often. All right. Back in. All right. How does this look? Civil servant. Yeah, this is probably fine. The blue might be a little tricky to, to line up here, but turn two civil servants pretty nice. Especially with our deck, we we've got a lot of um, we got a lot of citizens that we could follow up, even if we don't hit our mana. All right, Cricket Custodian is annoying though, and this is a bad draw. We don't have any blue mana at all, and we're missing land drops, so that's just a blank. I'm not going to block here though. We have a lot of draws that could be relevant. I'm just going to discard the Kraken this time. It's either that or the server, but server's probably more likely to hit. Okay. Jewel Thief. But unfortunately, it's not a thing. Still, Crooked Custodian has been... Like, I have two three toughness guys on pretty early in the game, and Custodian just sort of tussles with both of them. I think I just want to get Adjudicators down. It, it's a real shame if it means that I don't get um, Lagrella going for a while. But having a 4-4 out when you have prize fight in your hand is like a pretty big deal. Also, it's just a very impactful play this turn. Hmm. Actually, I will do that. I have the Jewel Thief back anyway. The Worst Master can't attack, and the life point swing's pretty relevant here. So, we'll see how this pans out. Um, I'm going for the more near-term play here by playing this Bar's Adjudicators, rather than, um, you know, trying to set something up with uh, Lagrella, but... My choices were difficult because if I play Lagrella, I don't really have anything obvious that I want to get myself. So I'm just sort of like taking out a random witty, witty roast master from my opponent. And that's not very high upside against this color trio. Like red and black can kill Lagrella pretty easily. If I cast a speakeasy server, I have to sacrifice the treasure anyway. So I lose the ability to cast this, but then I have this instead of this. So I went for the higher upside play. Trying to leverage prize fight. Also, any land can get me speakeasy server down, which actually be pretty good too. I'm not going to block here. I kind of like the crack back here. There's a land. Is this thing a it is. So I could go speakeasy server, attack with everything, and then pump the civil servant. That's 
that puts me out of range of dying. The other option I have is to do an attack here where prize fight can break up a double block or something. I could also just prize fight the witty roast master and then attack with the servant and the jewel thief and then pump the servant. It would require like both of these creatures to block it basically. I think I'm going to go for the high. The I'm going to go big or go home here and play the speakeasy server. You just attack with everything. Like this, this lets my opponent make a few reasonable trades like roast master for servant or roast master for thief. But I also get the life gain out of it and I'm hammering as hard as I can. And I'm not really worried about the crack back because I'm going to be at 19. And the blocks aren't great. Like, I don't mind getting the Witty Roastmaster off the battlefield. And yeah, as you can see, it's going to be Crooked Custodian and Token versus Speakeasy Server and Adjudicators if they block like that. And that's definitely not where you want to be for the opponent opposing side. They also take a good amount of damage here. And I have some real, like if I draw an island, then I have like a, I can kill two creatures in one turn type hand, which is pretty dope. And even as it sits, I can still prize fight something down. Also, not that I thought this far ahead, but I do happen to have lethal. Like I, my opponent does have to come up with something. Oh no. Oh no. They're going to play land and then sweep the board. No, they've got whack. Okay. And then maybe they're going to tap this down. They're going to light it up. Okay. This all works too then. So that was much better <laughs> than I had hoped. They two for two for two themselves, basically no big deal. And now I can say go. That was a good, that, that worked out well for them though, because they did take down my four, four. So prize fight looks a lot worse. Looks like they're going to do some mana fixing here. Okay, Glamorous Outlaw could be really good this game, but uh, they're gonna need a few more turns before it gets there. Same thing with Bandits, those are both six drops, so. Okay, they missed their land, I'm not gonna activate Skycrier. <clears throat> I just really can't afford to give them land drops when they're on four. Maestro's Charm, sure. Could prize fight just to get Lagrella down, but it's just not doing that much here. Hmm. All right, looks like I am going to have to price fight to kill the plasma jockey though cuz that card does change the race scenario somewhat. And this does give me access to one very precious blue mana. Hmm. Yeah, this isn't how I wanted this to go.
boy, if they hit a land here, they get to play six, three, six drops in a row, probably, because they'll start with Glamorous Outlaw. Oh, they did hit the land. And then they can just scry a land to the top. Yeah, that should be it. I mean, I can't handle them. I haven't played, I've played like three mana worth of cards in three turns, and they're going to play 18 over the next three. I don't think it's going to take a miracle. Not a blue card, that's for sure. Bummer. This deck was not amazing, but it certainly was better than this. Yeah, that will do it. All right, well, an unfortunate ending for today's draft. Just that those draws just didn't quite come together. Took a couple of chances and they did not pay off. Doesn't mean that they were wrong. They may have been, but that's not, you know, how we approach those type of decisions. But yeah, two wins for this thing. Boo. All right, well, we'll be back at it again tomorrow. We'll see you then.